Come with us as we recap a movie where Octavia Spencer transforms into the berries and cream guy. Berries and cream, berries and cream. Now I see what's going on. Maggie and her mother, Erica, move back to Erica's hometown to start a new life. Maggie is giving Bella Swan. Maggie is a bit nervous on her first day at her new school. On her way to class, she even helps a student named Jeannie, whose wheelchair gets stuck. Jeannie says thank you, and Maggie says you too. That's gonna haunt Maggie forever. Yeah, you too. You too. You too. Meanwhile, Erica is finding it difficult to adjust to her new work at the casino. A girl named Haley approaches Maggie, introducing herself and says she's not into scissoring for some reason. Haley invites her to a friend's party, but Maggie declines, saying she'll go to the music festival with her mother. A boy named Andy shows interest in Maggie, and she quickly picks up on that. The next day, plans change, and Erica can no longer attend the festival with her daughter. So Maggie calls her new friends, and they come to pick her up. Girl, that's a white van. They traffic people in that shit. The group is made up of four friends, Haley and Chaz, Darrell and Andy. They want to get drunk on the weekend, so they plan on buying liquor at the store, except they are all fetuses. They try to get other people to buy drinks for them, but they either ignore the teens or tell them off. They send Maggie to ask for favors instead. Maggie tries to ask a woman to help her, but the woman doesn't want to. Andy gets out of the car to help Maggie get out of possible trouble. Sue Ann takes a good look at Andy's van, then changes her mind and buys drinks for them. They make a deal that no one will find out about Sue Ann buying the drinks. Afterwards, the group comments about how Miss Octavia want to sit on Andy's face. That night, the group heads to the rock pile to get drunk. Sue Ann checks Andy's social media account and reports him to his father, Ben. Sue Ann's day job is professional Facebook stalker. Ben is currently busy getting his pole cleaned, so he's pissed when he picks up the call. The group realizes there's cops. An officer walks up to them, asking them questions. The officer reveals that Andy's father has sent him to check on the group. He says Ben was such an awful person back in high school, so he's going to let the teens off the hook this time. When Maggie gets home, she gets into an argument with her mother, who asks her to make smarter decisions in life, just like her mother, who is working at the casino. The next day, Erica takes their dog to the vet where Sue Ann is working. And while Sue Ann is watching Erica walk away, Dr. Brooks scolds her again for not focusing on her work. A few nights later, Sue Ann helps the group to purchase more alcohol. Then she tells them that she's being closely monitored and she can't afford to lose her job. So she tells them to follow her so they can pay her back without anyone seeing her. The group follows Sue Ann to a secluded house in the woods, even joking that the woman has a thing for young Andy. Then to their surprise, Sue Ann offers to let them use her basement for partying. They look to the black kid for guidance, but even he don't trust her. Eventually, they don't see anything wrong with it, so the group happily accepts the offer and enters the basement. Sue Ann warns them that though they can do anything they want to do in the basement, they are not allowed upstairs. She asks for the car key so the teens can't leave without telling her. Daryl even gets too comfortable and calls Sue Ann, Ma, short for Madea. Chaz starts telling her how to make the place look cool. To everyone's surprise, Sue Ann retrieves a gun and points it at Chaz, asking him to take off his shirt. So he does. Everyone is scared, and Ma insists that Chaz get naked. So he does. That's when she bursts into laughter and tells everyone the gun doesn't even work. Everyone starts laughing and joking about it. She done violated a high schooler, Ma Sussy AF. Just like that muscular, chiseled man who was 23 when this was filmed. So few, okay. And soon, all of them are drunk. At the end of the night, Ma remembers her high school days as she watches the teens leave. She checks Erica's social media and finds out she's working in a casino. That day, Erica sees her old high school classmates, Ben and Mercedes, playing. She wants to do her job, but drunk Mercedes mocks and taunts her for going back to their town when they all thought Erica was going to make it big. Mercedes talks down on her like she's some beautiful bimbo, but she a wrinkly, fugly whore. After school, the group is surprised to find a box filled with booze. They soon receive a video call from Ma, telling them to party in her basement. They are all unaware that Ma is watching them. When they arrive at Sue Ann's, the place is packed with teen students from different schools. Everyone is getting drunk and having fun. Ma even dances with them when she's not serving them food and drinks. Yes, Mama, do them TikTok dances. She even caresses Andy, thinking she's Gen Z. This all reminds Sue Ann the time a popular boy started spending time with her when she was just a teen. At one point, Ma goes to Daryl to feel up on his arms, saying, Milk did that body good. Jail! Octavia Spencer, Oscar winner, is going to jail. During the party, Ma compliments the earrings Maggie is wearing, and she says it's from her mother. There's noise coming from upstairs, and Ma blames it to on the ice machine. 
So she goes upstairs to grab a needle of a Zampic to deal with the noise. Later, Haley badly needs to use the toilet, but there are people inside. So she grabs Maggie to accompany her upstairs. Maggie keeps watch while Haley does her business. She hears people arguing, so she gets in the toilet and tells Haley that they have to leave right away. However, when they get out, Ma attacks and pushes them to the wall. Maggie quickly tells her friends they have to leave. The next day, she wakes up to the sound of her phone, receiving a bunch of messages from Sue Ann apologizing for what happened. Stephanie decides to have her birthday party at Ma's, inviting everyone at school. Andy asks Maggie out, and they finally make it official. Why they kind of look like siblings, though? After school, they are frightened to find Ma waiting for them. She asks them to party with her, but they all decline as it is a school night. Daryl says he has a history paper, making a slavery joke, but Ma ain't amused. Ma even gets offended when Haley tells her she needs a man. Haley speaking on facts, no printer. Sue Ann finds a different group of teens who need her help, but she quickly realizes they are just using her. Maggie and her friends attend Stephanie's party at Ma's basement. Ma gets Maggie to take a shot, when she wakes up, her earrings are gone. She tells Andy she doesn't want to hang out at Ma's place anymore and makes him promise not to go there. She done roofied you ass Maggie because Sue Ann keeps on messaging them. Haley makes a video telling everyone to block her. So Ma changes her phone number. She sends videos and all sorts of messages to the teens telling them to meet her at the rock pile because of something important. When the group gets there in the morning, Ma reveals that she has pancreatic cancer and that it makes her not act like herself. Feeling sorry for her, the group tries to console her, saying that she'll get through it. However, Haley notices the gold bracelet Ma is wearing, and she knows that it's Stephanie's. Later, Haley reveals that her ring is missing, and because Maggie's earrings are also missing, the two young women decide to break into Sue Ann's house, convinced that she has stolen their stuff. Meanwhile, Ben takes his dog to the vet and is surprised when he meets Sue Ann again. He chats with her a little bit before asking her to meet him at a restaurant later that night. Excited about spending some time with her high school crush, Sue Ann immediately agrees, saying she'll change her clothes after her shift and will meet Ben afterward. Maggie and Haley enter the house through the basement and are shocked to see tons of pictures in Ma's room. A girl catches them in the act but promises not to tell Ma anything. It's Jeannie, and Maggie still remembers her from her first day in school. She's surprised that Jeannie is not using a wheelchair. Jeannie says that she's very sick and not even supposed to walk. She wants to go back to school, but her mother doesn't let her anymore. This is the Gypsy Rose storyline. She tells the two that Ma doesn't like people going in her room, so they should leave right away. Luckily, by the time Ma pulls into the driveway, Maggie and Haley are already on their way out. Ma goes to her daughter and injects her some more to keep her sick and at home, where she feels it's safe. At the restaurant, Ma thinks she's on a date with Ben. However, Ben takes out a device and explains that it's a tracking device, and all of his vehicles, including Andy's van, have one on it. He asks Sue Ann what Andy is doing around her house and accuses her of taking revenge on him through his son. Ben calls her a loser and a nobody. Despite the threats, Sue Ann refuses to admit the truth. The next day, her boss reprimands her again for being constantly on her phone, and Miss Thang over here looking like she's on her last straw. When Maggie gets home, she's shocked to hear Ma's voice in the living room. Erica explains that Sue Ann is only checking on the dog they have brought to the vet, but she also introduces Sue Ann to Maggie, saying she's a familiar face from high school. Both Maggie and Sue Ann pretend they are meeting for the first time, but Maggie is visibly uncomfortable. Sue Ann remembers an awful memory from her high school days. After young Ben made her believe he liked her, she went into the janitor's room and cleaned a pole she thought was Ben's. She did what young Mercedes taught her to do. When she got out of the room, Ben and other students were laughing at her. She was horrified as a different teen walks out of the closet. That day on her way home, Ma sees Mercedes on her usual jog, and she deliberately hits her with her car. Maggie notices that their dog is bleeding. She hears a noise, assuming someone was just there. Then Ma done killed the veterinarian and stuffed her in a cage. Erica knows the vet's office is already closed, so she wants to call Sue Ann instead. Maggie says, fuck that. Maggie admits that they've been spending time over at Sue Ann's house. Erica is furious and wants to call the police, but she just grounds Maggie for the entire summer break. Ben goes to Sue Ann's house, thinking that Andy is there. That's when Sue Ann injects him with something strong enough to knock him out. When he wakes up, he's tied to the bed. This is Sue Ann's dream. Sue Ann threatens to cut his cucumber. And ma'am, they actually show it, I was shooketh. He begs her to stop, but she still cuts off his wrist and lets him bleed to death. At a liquor store, Erica confronts Ma to keep away from the kids. Ma goes on a rant on how Erica used to be popular, but not anymore. Meanwhile, Ma sends Maggie a selfie looking sus with Andy. 
Then she sees a video of Ma parting with Andy, even shows off the stolen earrings. Maggie sneaks out the house to confront Andy, but Andy explains that he doesn't have a choice but to go because it's Chaz's party. Haley is elated to see her and even kisses her, so Haley is into scissoring. Ma gives Jeannie her meds and forces her to sleep before going downstairs again. Maggie realizes that Ma put something in the drinks because all of her friends are now unconscious, and there are only six of them in the basement. She hears Ma locking the door from the outside, and it won't budge even though she tries. So Maggie uses the stairs to get inside the house. She hears someone asking for help, and when she follows the voice, she finds Andy's father dead on the bed. Ma injects her with diazepam, and Maggie soon loses consciousness. When she wakes up, she finds that she and her friends are bound and have dog collars. Ma cuts Chaz's shirt, caresses it, and burns his skin with an iron. Why'd ketchup come out of the iron, though? When Ashley sees this, she panics and tries to run, so Ma hits her head with the same iron. Then she stitches Haley's lips together so she can't talk again. Meanwhile, Erica calls a cop and her friend since she notices her daughter isn't home. Then she puts white paint on Daryl's face. She really wrong for that one. Andy wakes up. Sue Ann says he smells good, just like his daddy. She says they're the cutest couple. He tries to distract Ma by kissing her. Jail! They actually kiss in the movie. But Sue Ann knows he's lying, so she stabs him in the stomach. A police officer rings the doorbell, forcing her to pause the torture. The officer thinks something's going on, but when Jeannie shows up, he changes his mind. However, Maggie makes some noise, and the officer turns around again, only for Ma to shoot him dead. Then Sue Ann forces Jeannie to help her drag the body inside. Afterwards, she orders Maggie to position the bodies for a group photo and forces her to take pictures. Then she strangles Maggie by hanging her by the neck. Ma hears Jeannie screaming, saying that the cop is still moving, so she rushes upstairs. But Jeannie hits her ass, and she falls down the stairs and hits her head, knocking a candle over. The rest of the group wakes up but can't do anything, because they are tied. Jeannie lets them all go, and Erica and her friend arrive just in time to let them out. But Ma is still alive, and she grabs Jeannie so she can't leave. Erica realizes that Sue Ann is taking revenge for what happened to her before, so she apologizes to her. She says what happened shouldn't have happened, but Ma thinks it's too late, so she tries to drag Jeannie back to the house. That's when Maggie picks up the knife and stabs her. Maggie tells Ma that she's not weak and not like her mother. Damn, Erica catching strays over here. They get out of the house immediately, but Sue Ann refuses to leave. She goes upstairs to her bedroom, where Ben is lying dead. Then she gives him a kiss and lies down beside him as the house goes down in flames. Luckily, all the kids are still alive. What did y'all think of this one? It's interesting to see Octavia Spencer in such a different role. A fun thriller to watch for sure. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.